Okay, so I'm uh, Brice Morin from Sintef IST in uh, Norway. So we'll give a brief overview of the ThingML language and how we can use it to develop what we call uh, HD services. So actually we uh, yeah, saw quite a lot of uh, yeah, HD services today in the different sessions. So it's the class of services that actually needs to be uh, deployed on an heterogeneous set of nodes ranging from very small sensor up to gateway, smartphone, and even up to the cloud so that they can actually uh, provide useful services and generate uh, real added values. So a typical uh, use case that we are actually using in the HEADS uh, project is a personal security system. So the idea is that we equip a uh, guard with some body sensors and some sensor to yeah, see where the guards evolves in the building and so on when he's patrolling. Um, in case of an aggression, we will send an alert easier to uh, yeah, central police station, for example, or send alarms to uh, guards patrolling nearby. And we also want to act on the devices of the building so that we can uh, yeah, turn on the lights, for example, or to uh, turn on a physical alarm so that we can hope that the yeah, bad guy will run away. Um, so a kind of naive approach to this uh, use case, it's to basically put the whole logic of the service up to the cloud. So it's in a way quite easy to implement. You can yeah, basically do everything in Java, for example. But the main problem is that if you lose your connectivity, basically your service is completely down. You can't monitor your, the guard anymore. You can't send alarm anymore. And also the problem that we are facing is that uh, we cannot really send the full set of raw data up to the cloud because we are dealing with a uh, sensor that generates values every two milliseconds. So if we uh, transmit such an amount of data using Wi-Fi or GSM, the yeah, battery of the smartphone which acts as a gateway will go down very quickly because yeah, radio chip are very uh, power consuming. So that's why we need to engineer that kind of service as a HD service, so heterogeneous and distributed service. So yeah, maybe we still want to uh, run some logic in a cloud. So here we have to deal with, we can yeah, pick any language from Java, Node.js, Scala, or whatever language you yeah, like. And also you need to you yeah, use some yeah, framework to deal with uh, yeah, communication and so on. So probably you want to run some uh, logic also in gateways. So here you can use uh, yeah, Java embedded or maybe you want to go down to C or C++. Um, and also we need to run some logic directly in the sensors. So typically in the sensor that monitor the heart rate, we actually want to, instead of sending the raw data, sending some uh, high level uh, events. So here we probably, we have actually to go down to C uh, and actually without any OS, but we can in other use case maybe use a lightweight OS such as Contiki and so on. Um, and of course we need to kind of glue everything together. So here we have to uh, bridge a lot of uh, yeah, protocol stacks. So IP, ZigBee, Z-Wave, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy and any kind of custom radio protocols. Um, yeah, so yeah, actually it's not so easy. So typically if you yeah, meet a guy that pretends to master all of that, so yeah, either he's a genius, but most likely he's not. And a uh, yeah, problem that we are also facing is how we can test this kind of uh, highly heterogeneous uh, yeah, programs. So to yeah, try to answer some of the yeah, problem, we have developed this uh, ThingML language. So ThingML stands for uh, Internet of Things Modeling Language. So it's uh, yeah, fully open source and accessible on GitHub. And it's based on a set of uh, Eclipse technologies. So in particular, we use EMF and EMF text to uh, yeah, define and implement the language. And it's uh, also come with a textual editor integrated into Eclipse, or also available as a standalone uh, tool that you can 
basically download from a yeah, Java web start stuff. Um, but this modeling language, it's not just about uh, yeah, doing some model. We want to make it operational, so we want to be able to generate some code from it. And actually, we have uh, implemented a set of compilers that targets uh, C and C++. So we have, uh, for example, successfully generated code from, for the Raspberry Pi, for example, and also for the Arduino. So Arduino, uh, it's a very resource-constrained platform with only two kilobytes of RAM. So it's, uh, yeah, basically we go well uh, down in the stack in a way that, than, for example, Java AME, which needs at least 128 kilobytes of RAM to run. So here we want to address the very small sensors too. Uh, yeah, and for the bigger node, right now we are targeting the yeah, Scala language, which basically it's, uh, well, to make it short, it's Java, I can say. And we also provide some nice features. So for example, a message that has been defined in Thingamed, we are able to transform it into an array of byte. And it provides basic interoperability between Java, C, and most of the languages, which all rely or at least define the concept of uh, yeah, array of byte. And also it provides um, yeah, support for connectivity because whether you are dealing with uh, serial communication on USB or uh, over the air communication via Bluetooth or Zigbee or most uh, radio chip, in the end, you have to send uh, arrays of bytes and you receive arrays of bytes so that we can yeah, basically provide support for e communication and also to, for portability among the different languages. So if you have a quick word on integration, so it's uh, defined as a set of Maven project built with uh, Jenkins. So every time we commit, we yeah, trigger a build on a server and we also have some tests that checks that the Java code that is generated from ThingML is equivalent to the C code that is generated from ThingML. And we use this uh, T code to actually uh, yeah, generate all the Eclipse plugins and the update sites so that you can also get the updates directly within the Eclipse ID. So a quick word on the methodology. So here it's yeah, pretty much classic. So we start by defining what are the, basically the API of the system. So what are the messages you want to exchange between your components? And then you will put it uh, together within ports. And then you need to define what is platform independent because the idea is that we want to be able at runtime or design time independent to move some uh, logic that was running, for example, on a Java node to move it on a node that is more uh, constrained based on C, so we need sometimes to have some yeah, platform independent components. But sometimes you know that whatever uh, decision, this component will run on uh, C or Java, so you have to make this decision. And then we uh, also provide support to automatically mock the components. So we generate some small graphical widgets which represent all the components that you have in your application. And then you can start uh, you know, we're playing with your system, but without any implementation, just to yeah, make some quick uh, demos. And then you can start actually implementing your system, so you basically replace the mockups step by step and you implement them. So here we provide basically state machines and an action language to yeah, define the logic of your system. And we also provide a kind of template language so that we can actually interact with uh, third-party APIs or legacy APIs in C, Java, or different language. So a few examples uh, that have been implemented in ThingML. So you can go uh, and look on uh, yeah, our GitHub. So here is uh, yeah, some ThingML code. So here we have uh, yeah, basically a component that implements a set of interfaces. Um, yeah, and here the logic is described as a yeah, state machine in a yeah, textual way. And here it's a yeah, small example on how we integrate uh, a C library within SingML. So it's uh, yeah, this yeah, operator here where we can mix C code with SingML code. Um, yeah. So that's yeah, pretty much it for me. So 
I guess I will not yeah, comment that one. So if you have any question or 